Hi. Guess what we're going to make today? It's a little heartbreaker. Isn't it fun? this thing okay so this is part of my heartbreaker series this is the wristlet which is a little heartbreaker and then there's a larger one that is a um, crossbody bag that can also be a backpack so let's go over this one so this is a gusseted bag that has a d-ring connector with a wristlet strap and then the zipper goes pretty much all the way around except for a small portion here makes it a little different I put an applique on this one this is my Wednesday inspired applique so we're making a Wednesday bag today and this video is releasing on a Wednesday so I'm making a Wednesday bag on a Wednesday um, so this applique does not come with the pattern, but you can purchase it separately if you would like. However, the pattern does come with two different appliques. One applique is basically a frame that looks just like this without the webbing on the inside. Then there is another applique that is a smaller heart that can be placed on the inside. Um, so it's two different appliques that it comes with. So that's fun. So you can kind of play with that. The way that this opens is really neat. It opens like a box, like a candy box, like a Valentine's Day candy box, right? Isn't it cute? Okay, so on the inside, this is what it looks like. So there's a panel there and then the inside and it has a little, little pocket. So we're going to do a little mesh pocket here with some fold over elastic. It is a bound bag, so just keep in mind that there is some binding involved, but it's relatively painless. Um, I'm not a huge binding person, but um, I think the curves on this are wide enough where binding was not an issue, so it gives it a pretty good shape. You can use this as a regular wristlet, fits a phone, fits a lot of things in it, or you can use it as a train case, cosmetic case. There's a lot of different ideas you can use this bag for. So I hope you enjoy making this Wednesday inspired heartbreaker. Okay, so let's talk about some of the supplies that you're gonna need. Um, I like to use just clips, double-sided tape. This is eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch will keep the tape out of your seam allowance. You don't have to use eighth of an inch. You could also use something a little bit thicker, but this is just what I like to use. I get mine from Tandy Leather. Um, a plier stapler or any other stapler that you have handy. Um, just some snips. Staple remover. This is the kind I like to use. I don't like to use the um, more like alligator clip one. There's bias tape. I just have a roll of um, double, si double fold bias tape. You can also make your own bias tape or you can use waterproof canvas strips. Some rivets, your zipper pull, your D-ring, your um, swivel clasp, some shears. Make sure you have plenty of staples. I usually just keep an extra, um, you know, some staples on the side just in case I run out because I use a lot of staples. Um, a chalk pencil or any type of a marking pencil that's easily removed. This is just a Derwent pastel pencil. So this is just chalk um, that comes in like a bunch of different colors from the art supply store. So I like to use these because it's inexpensive um, and I can get any color I want. I mostly use white. If you are need to, needing to mark up any type of vinyl, um, I would definitely suggest a uh, metallic pen like this one for Mormino. Um, this does write on metallic and comes, sorry, it writes on vinyl and comes right off. Um, and it is a metallic pen, a lighter, and a ruler. Okay, let's talk about all the different pattern pieces you're gonna need. You're gonna need a your front panel. I applique mine. Go ahead and applique yours if you want to applique it. Add any interface facing or foam that you want to add. This is marine vinyl on the outside. I did some cotton woven on the inside here that you're seeing peek through. And then I did a layer of Pixie Fuse Heavy um, on the entirety of the, the uh, pattern piece. Another piece of Pixie Fuse Heavy, the size of the stabilizer pattern piece, and then foam. Um, so mine's, mine's pretty sturdy, pretty sturdy. 
and then your back piece i kind of um i just use plain vinyl this is just marine vinyl make sure you add your label when wherever you want to add your label if you have a, a bad label that you want to add and then this just is one layer of marine vinyl and foam so there's really nothing to this one i would say the weight of this is a little bit stiffier stiffer than this one only because um you'll see when you make the bag you want that top to to have a little bit more stability the bottom piece you're fine you want two lining pieces so this is going to be my lining i did mine out of um, cotton woven and i interfaced with some sf 101 then you're going to want your gusset um, so this is the zipper gusset so i'm doing mine out of marine vinyl again i put some foam using the pattern piece for stabilizer so it's a little bit smaller than the pattern the pattern piece itself the larger piece and lining which was the same size again cotton woven with sf 101 is what i'm using and then there is a bottom gusset piece i did not line it with anything because there is a bottom gusset stabilizer piece that is peltex that we're going to be sandwiching in between so i don't really need to do anything with this one then we have our wrist strap i'm going to do mine out of vinyl i'm going to show you a variation of how to make a wrist strap that is different than what the pattern shows you so but i still am using the same dimensions and again this is marine vinyl and then a d-ring connector which um, i'll show you what's going to be different about this one i did not have half inch hardware to use so i'm using one inch so i just made sure my pattern pieces were cut accordingly um if you want to put a label on the inside this is the one that i'm using because i thought it was funny and went well with a wednesday bag it says over it and this is from sewing blurbs so this is um something that just came into the mail for this week or oh, sorry for this month's um subscription they have really really cute ones this month and zipper tape so um i am going to use a black zipper tape that has a little bit of an iridescent um teeth on it this is just nylon zipper tape and then lastly i am going to be doing a uh, netting for my um, pocket on the inside and a piece of fold over elastic so those are your pieces okay so let's mark our wrist strap and d-ring connector first we are going to draw a line that is at the halfway mark um, of each of these then grab your tape we're going to be placing a piece of tape on the sides here so on the long sides of each of the pieces you want some tape right so we're going to fold up to the line that we just drew fold up each side we're going to meet kind of here in the middle so turn this around and then fold it up this side of the D-ring connector. Okay. I'm just going to clip this just so that it stays in place while I'm sewing. I tend to put the clips kind of like towards the, the edges. Just because these types of clips do make indentations in your vinyl. It comes out, but I try to at least hide those indentations okay we'll do the same on this one for your wrist strap i'm going to flip this over and just put some clips every now and then just to kind of keep it in place so once we are at this point, I am going to grab a pen that can I can write on vinyl with. So this is a metallic pen from Warm You Know. And I'm going to make a little curve here. Let me take this off at the top. This is more for decoration. You don't have to do this. Just find anything with the curve. I don't really like this one. Grab this. This is even better. So I'm just going to kind of trace a little curve um, here at the end. It's a very slight curve. That's fine. Um, and what I'm going to do is just cut that. 
so that there's a little curve to it. This will just be a little decorative element when you go to make the rest of the strap. We can just cut that part off and then rub off your marking. And it's a little curve. Okay. Yeah, and you don't have to do this. I just like to because it's pretty. Curve's a little crazy. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is go over to your machine and you're going to top stitch. Now we're going to go ahead and just top stitch the D ring connector left on the right side. I like to use something called Sewer's Aid. It's a Drix product. It helps my presser foot glide over vinyl really well. I get mine from Amazon. Joanne's used to carry it, but I haven't seen it there in a while. And it is a non-staining oil-like substance where I don't have to switch to like a Teflon foot or anything. I can just put this on, stitch, and then wipe it off. Okay. Okay, so now you're just going to take your swivel clasp and put it, uh, the strap through the clasp itself and fold it down. Just going to fold down one of the edges by about uh, like an inch or so. And then you're going to take your other end and pull it up to the, um, the top there. That curve is going to be pulled up. You want the curb side there. Then you're going to just um, make sure just it's aligned, you know, a little bit away from the, the edge there. And then clip. Just to kind of keep it in place. Then you'll just mark your middle so that you can go rivet. That's what it looks like. Just rivet there. Now that it's riveted, This is what it looks like. So to put the D-ring connector together, you're just going to take the connector and turn it over so that the part where you are joining the two sides together is facing you. Take your D-ring, slide that through. And then I'm going to put a piece of double-sided tape at the bottom and at the top. Just need little pieces. So you're going to fold the bottom up about three quarters of an inch or so and press that down and then you're going to fold this top part down to remove the paper and you're going to fold this down so you fold this part up fold this part down and you're done now I'll show you how to assemble the interior mesh pocket. So what you're going to need is the mesh panel, um, your fold over elastic, and I'm going to put a label that's going to peek out of the top part of the pocket. So I'll show you how to assemble that together. So the first thing you're going to do is take your fold over elastic. You're going to see that there's a shiny side and then there's a dull side. Make sure the dull side is facing up and then place your mesh about halfway through about halfway down from the top of the elastic. And we're just gonna start clipping. So go ahead and if it's around that halfway mark, fold it down. Again, I like to start in the middle and just clip. And we're gonna do this all the way around. Start all the way at the top here. I'm actually going to, I think, place my label Right around, I'm just going to sandwich it with the rest of it. Right around there, I think. And clip. 
I like to put a bunch of clips only because it is stretchy. Um, it can get a little puckery if you're not really careful. So I probably overclip when I do this, but it makes it pretty secure as you're, you're stitching. So definitely recommend adding lots of clips. Probably overdoing it, but it's fine. It depends on your fold over elastic. I've used some really um, weak fold over elastic before, and that stuff is harder to sew through because it's too loose. Okay. All right. So probably more clips than I need, but it's fine. Okay, now we're going to go over to the machine and we are going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the bottom edge of the elastic. All right, I changed my thread to black so that it blends with this. I just didn't want it to be apparent if my stitches are not completely straight. When you're sewing something stretchy like this, sometimes your stitches can be a little bit off. Okay, so that part is done. So now what you're gonna do is you are going to take your one of your lining pieces and you're just gonna lay your pocket and align it with the, align the center bottom of your pocket with the center bottom here of your lining piece and just kind of clip it together. So, Mine's about um, there, I guess. That's about center. Okay, so we're just going to cut away the excess just using your, your shears. All right, and just clip away. Just be careful not to stretch out your mesh. So this is what it looks like when it's done. So that's your lining. So this is just the one panel of lining. I'm not going to do another pocket on the other side. You could. You could certainly do one. I know um, people have done like credit card slots and other things, but this is all I'm going to do. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're going to attach the exteriors to the linings. We're basically going to base them together. So take one of your, um, take your back piece wrong side up and the lining back piece right side up. Now you can either stitch on this side or this side. So just decide what you want. I think I'm going to do it on this side. Well, mm, the only reason I was thinking of doing it on this side is because the mesh can kind of get caught at the bottom. So, all right, yeah, I'll do it this side. Okay, so I'm going to use some longer clips just because I don't want to make marks on my vinyl. We're going to stitch all the way around on the edges, an eighth of an inch away from the edge, all the way around, all the way. Um, I'm using a four millimeter stitch length. I've already done one of the panels. So I will, this is my last one that I will do. So here's my back and here's the lining piece of the back. I had already done the front. So this one was just plain on the back. So now what I did is I took the pattern piece and I laid it over each of these sides to mark where I need to install my gusset. So I made a little mark here and down here. And I tried to make marks on here. Mind you, these are opposite, right? So there's a mark here and a mark down here. You'll need to flip the pattern piece over and make another mark um, on the opposite side. So they need to be mirrors of each other. I used pins to kind of mark 
these spots just because it was harder for me to see through the mesh. So I just pinned through the cotton woven part, not through the vinyl. You don't want to make holes in the vinyl. So I did those. Now we're going to move on to the gusset. So what we're going to do is lay our gusset horizontally and at the top, put down a piece of tape. Take your paper backing off. All right, so now we're going to take our zipper and just lay the zipper right side down. So the wrong side is facing up of your zipper. Right side of the zipper is to the right side of your gusset. This is the back side of my gusset. So it's the right side of the gusset to the right side of your zipper. I'm going to lay yet another piece of tape down because I like tape. Okay, now I'm going to take the lining gusset and I'm going to flip it over. So it's right side down. Okay. I'm just going to put a few clips just to kind of hold it in place so nothing shifts at all when I am sewing. We're going to go ahead and stitch along the top edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to keep my black thread for all of my seams. The reason why I'm going to try to match the thread with my, um, my main color of my bag is, especially with vinyl, when you're stitching, it can pull slightly and you can start to see some of your stitches. So if you have the same color, fat, color thread, it's less noticeable, um, especially with curves, it can pull a little bit. So I just try to keep a matching thread when I'm doing any of my, my stitches in the seams. I'm going to back stitch after I sew a couple stitches. Okay. So now that you have this together, you are going to just press your lining. You could take this to the iron. I just tend to finger press it. It's easier. And then fold it back where now you're pressing your vinyl. So now these two pieces are right side together. Just kind of press it down as best as you can. I'm actually going to use a seam roller. Oh, fine squeaky. To put some, some oil in that. I have this little mini seam roller from Hannah Woodworking. Such great stuff there. Oops. Okay. Just pushes your seam down for you. Okay. So, what I like to do is just clip this together just to kind of hold it. We're going to top stitch the seam here, but I just like to keep it kind of clipped down. We're going to top stitch along the seam here on the vinyl at an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way down. So I'm going to change my thread to the lavender because I like to top stitch with the, the, uh, the lavender thread is what I've been doing on this one. I'm going to go put my zipper pull on. One thing I want to show you 
in case you're wondering which direction to put your zipper on. So I have my zipper. So this is going to be the front. So your zipper tape is going to be on the front side of your bag. I like that my zipper zips closed to the left. So it opens to the right, but it closes to the left. So that's how I have mine put on. Okay, so now we're gonna take our two gusset pieces. There's an exterior and a lining. Take your exterior, and it doesn't matter which side, just any short side, and turn it over with right sides together and clip along the top. Okay, now flip this over, take your lining, oops, it looks like I moved my lining down a bit. Take your lining bottom gusset and turn it over with right sides together and include it in the clips that you just put on here. And then we're gonna go and to stitch, actually we have one more. I'm gonna have to take this one off pretty soon. Okay. By the way, I did switch over to black thread. Just so in case this pulls at all, you'll just see black thread pulling through on the exterior side. It won't be very noticeable. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this down. I am gonna back stitch, change my stitch length to about two and a half. Back stitch here. And back stitch again. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this so that it's, we're pulling these two sides out, just press it down. Just down your fingers. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time I top stitches. I'm just gonna pull these so that they're meeting and clip them on the edges just so that it stays nice and taut when I'm top stitching. I'll do a few here too. It's just to kind of hold it in, hold it out so that's nice and flat here when you're top stitching. I'm going to go ahead and switch out my thread. Use a little sewer's aid. I'll switch my stitch length. going to happen after we've top stitched this is we're going to take the other short end and pull it up to meet the exterior only leave your lining loose just leave it loose just have it meet here and we're going to clip Trying to make sure my zippers are zipper is meeting up. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we are going to stitch along at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. 
make sure your lining is not, not included in that stitching. So just keep everything else together though. So we're really just going to baste this down. Okay. So now what we're going to do, some loose threads here. Now what we're going to do now that this is in half and it's stuck together and this is loose, this lining piece is loose, we are going to roll this folded piece up towards the top. I, I like to just pull it forward just a little bit on the top and then roll. Just roll pretty tightly. You might have to do it a couple times just to make sure it can meet. Look, we're on the first try. All right, so we're going to meet. So what we did was it's rolled. Let that lining piece fall. Pull the lining piece up and have it meet with that seam that you just sewed. And just clip. It's gonna be a little tight, which is why we basted to begin with, because it's helpful. Okay, so now we're gonna just go ahead and stitch regular seam allowance here. Need another little clip up here just to kind of get me started. I'm not sure what you're going to be able to see on camera because this is a big rolled up piece of fabric. I'm going to go ahead and back stitch. stiletto here just to kind of push everything in place. And go ahead and back stitch at the end. have that together it should look like this you're gonna pull from the center just pull it out just keep going okay so now you have a cylinder so what you want to do is go ahead and press this part down And I'm going to clip kind of here and here. Don't worry. Like, I'm, I'm a little off on my gusset. I'm just going to have to get creative when I stitch this together. It's fine. I'm a little crooked. But I'll make that up when I stitch everything together. Okay. So... What we're now going to do is we're going to top stitch along that seam, just like we did over here, an eighth of an inch away. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of Sewer's Aid and I'm going to switch my thread to lavender. So, ugh. Get that a little bit of Sewer's Aid threads out. Would have been smart if I had had two bobbin cases ready, one with lavender and one with black. I didn't do that. Okay. 
so just kind of maneuver on in there. real fast. Now we're going to take our stabilizer, our Peltex, and we're going to put this in the slot in here, just kind of center it, just kind of feel around, kind of center it in there. I just had straight threads. And what we're going to do, we are just going to clip so just clip the opening closed on both sides. And just, we're gonna baste along the edges to keep everything in place. And then you're gonna continue to clip the opening. So your, this is your zipper side. Go ahead and just continue to clip this opening here. should look like now just one tube okay so we're now going to take the back panel in our gusset and we're going to put the back on first this is going to be an easier way to sew this up if you do the back first okay so zipper is where the front is non-zipper is where the back is so we're going to attach the back like this okay that's where it's going to go. So go ahead and turn this this way. So the right sides are on the inside. Okay. And we are going to do right sides exterior to exterior. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to line up our marks with this bottom gusset. Okay. So the bottom gusset piece where the seam is, there's a seam right here. I'm going to line that up with where I put this pin where I made my mark. And I'm going to clip. Okay, and then I'm going to take this mark. I'm going to line it up where the seam is over here. And I'm going to clip. And then you're going to clip all the way around. Okay, I missed a little piece here too. Now you're gonna clip all the way around. All right, I'm gonna actually sew that little bit down because I'm gonna have problems if I don't. Okay, all right, so we lined it up to start clipping away. I use staples. So I'm, I clip first and then I use staples to keep everything together while I sew, but I clip first just so I can make sure everything's going to fit okay. And then I keep it held together and I staple around in the seam allowance. So I get pretty close to the edge with my staples. Okay. 
have everything ready. I take my pens out so I don't accidentally sew over those. And I start stapling. All right, so I'm gonna do the amber trick and I'm gonna do a couple of stitches here at the dip and a couple of stitches here at the bottom. I changed my stitch length to about two and a half. She says she just does a couple of them. So we're gonna try that. Staples did not catch that bottom part. What I normally do is just go all the way around, but it sounds to me like what she's doing is starting um, with your gusset side down and she starts to stitch around, probably right below where the elastic is, all the way down to the other side of where the elastic is. So from here, down, and then up again. So we'll do that with the gusset side down. There's that side. We're going to flip it over where the panel side is. Where did we leave off on our stitching? Somewhere around here. Before I take the staples out, I'm just going to See how this looks. You need to do this a few times as you're adjusting. Carefully you don't poke yourself with the staples. I've done that. <laughs> yeah, it's looking pretty good. I have to like kind of play with it. Make sure. Round it out a little. Not bad. Okay. I can live with that. The hardest part of all of this is taking all the staples because there's so many staples. It's easier to put them in than take them out. Okay. Now we're on to binding. So I just use pre made double fold bias tape because I'm too lazy to make my own. Um, so what I do is I just cut it at an angle on the edge and turn it under so that it now has a nice edge here and I start clipping. So I just push it over the edges here Let's place it all the way around. I do not staple this, I do just clip it.
Okay, so we're going to extend this a little bit to maybe like here to overlap it a bit. And put this at an angle. Okay. So these clips actually because we need to go this way. We're just going to overlap this here. Hold this back down. and tight. We're in good shape. Okay. Let's start sewing it all together. This looks catch everything. Yeah. But yeah, I think we're I think we're good. It's a nice point here at the bottom too. So now we'll do the other side. And the way that's done is pretty much the same only it's just a zipper so we're still going to staple we're still going to line up our edges here oh, sorry our our marks with our seams clip staple and we'll sew So we're all stapled together so we can get sewing. All right, so here's the deal. I recorded sewing all of this together. I thought, nope, nope, didn't record. So let me just show you what I was doing. I'm gonna have to ask you just to pretend with me. Ah, okay, powers of technology, right? So basically what I'm doing <clears throat> is I'm sewing in the dip here, a couple of stitches, and then in, a, in the point here, a couple of stitches. And the way I was doing it is I was putting it down on, my, on the bed of my machine and just within the seam allowance, you can squish this down all you want, stitching just a couple of stitches here and doing the same, because this is nice and open, you can kind of shift this over and sewing here. That way it just keep, keeps it in place. I did not do anything fancy. I kept everything on the bed of my machine and literally just started sewing my regular seam allowance, starting in kind of a straight place that I would find kind of on the side. I started around here and I stitched all the way around with this laying flat, um, even down to this dip was fine and all the way to the edge. So you just need to keep going real, real slow. I mean, I'm squishing this entire thing down, just trying to make sure that I'm getting everything. The one thing that I would definitely recommend that you do when you're getting to the dip, I realize I have like staple city over here. What I do is I just kind of, when I get here, because it's stapled so well, I pull my zipper down a little bit. I just kind of make sure it's taut so it doesn't bunch up. I've stitched this before where it kind of started bunching up in it. Um, I had a crease. So just kind of pull this down, if you know, a little bit as you're sewing and going around. I then just kind of check to make sure everything was getting, you know, caught the way that it should. And it looked pretty good. The, the, the curve looks really good. 
So I think I'm in good shape. So I'm to the point now where I can just go ahead and just remove all of my staples. shape. I'm going to go ahead and just turn this out and just make sure that everything is looking good. Before we bind. Oh yeah. Thing of beauty. Oh, this looks, look at this. Look how pretty. All right, I'm happy. This is gonna be good. Okay, so we're just gonna bind the edges. I think we might have to do a little happy dance after this one's done. All right, binding time. Okay, we're going to cut a little bit at an angle on the end when we decide that we fold down. I'm going to do it, I think, starting here. I'm going to try to find like a straight side. It's going to be a lot of clipping. Still mad that I didn't record that one part. Still angry about it. Not happy. We're just going to go ahead and stitch our normal stitch length. I'm going to move my zipper up just a teeny bit. I'd like to just keep it away from the bulk down here just to, so it um, will glide a little bit easier. All right, so I'm going to start on a straight side, probably around here. I'm just going to move my clips a little bit, grab my stiletto. I am going to backstitch. Okay, let's turn this out just to be sure. that came through but otherwise I think it's in really good shape okay at this point you have a choice you can leave it as is as you noticed it zips fine like this no problem and it's beautiful or what you can do is you can now top stitch around this seam here about an eighth of an inch away 
um, on the vinyl side. And when you do that, you can basically flatten out, you'll notice the um, seam pokes out a little bit, but it didn't affect our zipper. You basically push this in in top stitch all the way through that layer so that it remains flat. I don't know that it, that it needs it, to be honest. I might just leave it alone. The way that you can do it, if you, if you would like to do that, is it's a little bit of a struggle at the beginning um, and at the end. What you do is you would lay this down flat, push your seams, like feel underneath and push your seams towards the middle and wedge your, your presser foot way into this corner. So this is why it's very difficult. You get it into this corner and then you'd start your stitching, go all the way around and then stop here. I do not back stitch when I do this. I pull my threads through and I hide them in the binding. So it is a possibility. It is very, very tough to do right here and on just this little point. But once you get started, it's pretty much a breeze. Um, and it will push your seams towards the middle. I mean, I think it's fine as is. I think it's, it's fine. Okay, so on to adding our D-ring connector. Okay, so what you're gonna do is we have this folded and we have this clipped. So I just marked in the middle and I put a hole so that goes all the way through. And I am going to take a pen and grab a ruler really quickly. Clip this back together. I do need to mark a spot here. I'm gonna mark it so it's maybe about mm, four inches. One, two, three, four inches around there, around here. I'm honestly just going to eyeball it and see where I like the placement. I feel like that might be okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take this over to the rivet press, and then that's where I'm going to put a hole. I'm going to put a hole here, and it's going to go all the way through to the inside. I like to use fray check on anything that is woven because it can fray where that rivet is and start to pull apart. So I just put a teeny bit of fray check in there and I put my rivet through and then you should be fine. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and push it through grab the cap to our rivet. So these are double oops, capped rivets. Okay, so I just pushed it together and I am going to go ahead and press this with my rivet press. And there's my D-ring connector. Bag. And here's my strap. We can connect our strap. And we now have a cute wristlet. Okay, so we're done. We made our heartbreaker. I hope you enjoyed making this with me. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I like getting really creative with this pattern. It's just, it's a blast. Um, so if you would like to see some inspiration photos, definitely check out my website for some ideas. Um, otherwise, join my Facebook group. Um, there's a ton of different ideas that have been posted in there. A lot of people are making this one, so you'll get some inspiration and ideas. You can ask questions, get some help. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video and uh, subscribing to my channel. My channel's new. Uh, so I'd love for you to subscribe, hit that notifications button. Uh, you'll be notified anytime I post a new pattern. Maybe, maybe I'll do another tutorial on this, maybe. Um, 
but I'll try my best to announce my patterns here on the YouTube channel and post tutorials when I can, do some sew alongs, who knows what else I'll do, who knows. Um, but I hope you had a great time with me. I had a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy.